Hi everybody, so uh, we're here for Mental Health Awareness Week. We're uh, looking to celebrate this event uh, by doing multiple things over the week. Um, but today what we're doing is we're, we've got an interview with Matt Piper, which uh, it's really, really exciting. Oh, I can't wait to hear all the different things that uh, he's having to say. So thanks for joining us, no worries, Matt. Glenn. Really appreciate that. Anytime. So um, when we're talking about mental health, um, I've heard you a number of times talk about stigma. So yeah. the stigma around mental health. So, could you talk to me about that and, and let us know sort of you know what, what what do you mean by that? Yeah, well, I still think the the stigma around mental health is huge, and that's why I felt you know we need to talk more and open up more and, and put it on our social media channels. Not everyone; it's not for everyone to talk about it more. But I felt in the position that I had in the platform that I had, I'd like to open it up and try and talk about it more because there is still a huge stigma mm. I think around mental health and reaching out talking about it sharing about it mm. and so I thought it was important to open up that conversation a few years ago actually I first yeah. started talking about it and then it sort of just snowballed from there with myself in particular you know everyone's different but I feel if we can try and talk about it more and you know open up those those cha channels of communication it, it can only benefit people yeah. that are going through a stigma i completely completely agree and I, I mean there's sort of two types of stigma really isn't there there's the stigma of um people that are going through mental health issues and they mm. sort of often think oh no one will listen or um i don't want to bring people down i don't want to be a burden and things like that and then there's uh sort of people that uh sort of are being told about the mental health issues from somebody mm. and and they often think you know oh how am I gonna help what what do I say what yeah. do I do what advice do I give well, you, do you get that um, impression as well yeah I do the second one that you you speak about in particular is the huge one for me mm. people are very nervous to to listen to someone that is talking about mental health they sort of want to stay away from the issue just because they think you know they do want to help most people want to help but they don't know what to say or what mm. advice to give and, and I've always said on that issue someone that just listens you don't in particular have to you know say the right things or do the right things but if you can listen and be that ear for someone to share with that's so powerful mm. and you know that's what I found in, in my journey you know sometimes it was strangers yeah that, that just posed the question and I could talk for the, for the best of times but and I just opened up and, mm. and talked and shared and and when you can you know share something like that with with an, another person it can be so powerful and it's helped me so much in, in my it's like life. um you know a weight being lifted off your shoulders isn't it i know sort of in my situation um i was having lots of issues uh in my in my family in mm. terms of uh relationships and um some of those relationships was being cut so i felt mm. like i was an outsider mm. uh when when i was going through it and uh what what was going through my head was right I'm just going to be in denial, I'm going to think, oh, it's all right, I'll put that to the side, I'll move forward, mm. I'll get on with my life, I'll throw myself into work and things like that. Mm. But when it came to actually talking to someone, I realised how, how, sort of, how much it's hit me and how much it's sort yeah. of taken over my life. Mm. And uh, when, when, do you know when the first time you spoke to someone, did you mm. feel, feel that as well? Did you feel like, actually, now I can start to tackle it? Yeah, I did. I mean, I I used different things at the time to try and get through it. So, you know, what you're talking about there is, you know, feeling those those thoughts, those emotions, and feeling really low. Mm. And you took yourself into work. I didn't have a job at the time. I was going through it. I just finished my my football career. Couldn't find what I wanted to do. So I had a lot of time to myself and really felt alone like what you're talking about. So what I did, I started to drink. Mm. Because when I drank, it seemed to relieve those feelings, thoughts, and that that feeling of being alone. So, and then drink was obviously a gateway to different areas of drug taking, harming myself in, in certain ways with what I was putting into my body. So that's when it got really difficult. Mm. But if I had someone at that point 
to talk to, I think I would have opened up yeah. to yeah. them because I, I felt that I really did want to talk to someone. But then it goes back to your first question about stigma and not knowing who to talk to, feeling like there's no one there to talk to. So it can become a really lonely and difficult place, I thought. I think it's a, it's a diff difficult point, that is, isn't it? Because obviously you're feeling low yourself. You know the things that you're going through. You don't want to pass those feelings on to someone else because you don't want them to feel that way, do you? But yeah. at the same time, you know, people are there to help you. And mm. unloading all of those feelings and thoughts, that can, one, sort of help yourself mm. and help you to understand what you're going through. But, but two, it can help you build a support network as well, can't it? Yeah, it can. And what you say there was so true with me. I felt... A little bit selfish you know when I first did start to share my story and you know reach out for help to people I felt selfish mm. because it was like I was unloading all these thoughts and negative feelings onto other people um, which was helping me at that point but what what was it doing to the other person but the fact that they were just there and listened and, and gave that support in that in the end a lot of people said it helped them yeah. knowing that they were helping me yeah. going through a difficult time so that's what I'd say to people that that have that fear of you know feeling selfish or unloading it on someone else often it can help that that other person as well yeah 100% I completely agree with that so in terms of um, you getting to our darkest point so like we all have triggers where we think actually do you know what this is enough you know um, we've got to the point here where um, we could do something that's that we might regret mm. um, and I, I certainly got to that point and I know mm. that you sort of got to that point too mm. um, so from from my perspective what happened was um, I was at my, my brother's wedding mm. um, and I was just walked into the room all smiles all happy talking to everyone and things like that but those relationships that I was talking about earlier mm. those people just didn't talk to me and it was like, I mean, like it's it, looking back on it, you know, like you you think, hold on a minute, like these people aren't talking to you, to me. It doesn't matter. You've got lots of people around you anyway, but mm. it affects you more than you think, doesn't it? So yeah. like um, at that point, it, it caused me to the next day sort of think, right, enough is enough. I'm I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna sort of drive down the motorway. I'm gonna crash my car. I'm gonna end it because it's 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 not enough. Yeah. I, I don't I don't want to go through this anymore because uh, I'm constantly thinking about it. It's constantly going through my mm. head. Have you got to that point before as well, where you're like, you think, oh, do you know what? This is this is too much to handle. Yeah, on, on many occasions, I think um, that all culminated with me, similar to you, having those thoughts, but then taking action to try and you know go through with it. Mm. So mine was I was drunk at the time, but mine was taking. 50, 60, you know, sleeping tablets, Valium, pills, paracetamol, coicodimol, like a whole concoction. Um, and, you know, really trying to go through with it. Thankfully, that didn't happen. My mum found me unconscious in a graveyard near, near to where I live. I went to basically die in that mm. graveyard, take my own life. So it, it got to, you know, total rock bottom mm. similar uh, as you know what happened with you and um, thankfully it, it didn't work what I tried to do and you know from that point I, I it helped me reach out further yeah. and, and ask for the support that I clearly needed at that time and then you know the story got better for me yeah. I you go to rehab you so learn. you went you went to rehab in April 2009, is that correct? Yeah, I did. Yeah. So my football career finished in early 2007, and for two years it was constantly drinking and sort of abusing myself, um, and, and that rock bottom period. Mm. But thankfully, rehab. I was only in rehab for six weeks. Yeah. And it really taught me some, you know, valuable lessons in in life, and it provides you with sort of tools that you never knew that you could use yeah it? exactly and there are only small things mm. you know building building good habits having you know having more discipline in my life uh, accepting responsibility uh, because all the all the way through this period i was a father mm. 
I was a father, I was a son, I was a brother. Lots and of responsibility. Lots of responsibility and I just turned my back on it mm. because of how I was feeling and what I was going through. So rehab taught me all those little tools. And listen, for me, you never ever, you know, are cured no. uh, from, from mental health issues. Mm. You know, once I'd been through those kind of issues, they still come up like they always used to. Mm. But now, thankfully, I have the tools to be able to call upon, um, whether that's fitness, whether that's routine, whether that's small habits, whether that's eating healthy, yeah. limiting the intoxicants that I put in my body, the toxins that I put in my body. So, and, and that's all helped me build a more, you know, happy, responsible life. I mean, in that environment, they they talk more about sort of the issues that cause that's causing your coping mechanism rather than the coping mechanism itself so in terms of the you know your your coping mechanism was was the drinking mm. but um <clears throat> i know that when when i had therapy mm. uh they spoke they didn't speak about the uh the, the the fact that i'm throwing myself into work they were trying to get down to that root problem mm. and i found that it really really supported me in in my journey going forward was that the same with you yeah and i think that's the most important thing you know what is the cause mm. you know we know what the the symptom is but what is the cause of why you're feeling like this and why you're deciding to to go down this pathway for me of drink drugs alcohol yours is throwing yourself into work and, and not feeling right and it comes back to what our first point i think of keeping that all in your head to yourself. Mm. You know, once I was in rehab and I was having the therapy sessions, all it is is this. Yeah. It's a chat, it's, it's a talk, and it's going over, you know, old ground of, of why, what was the trigger, mm. uh, and finding that and getting to the bottom of it, and then finding those tools that in the future, what what can you call upon to help you through them periods instead of the drink, the drugs? or keeping it all to yourself yeah definitely i think i think what the what's really important is that um you, you understand that there are people out there who are willing to listen willing to talk willing to help mm. um and i think what, what um i really helped me get through was my little support network that i had mm. so i had my wife who i could speak to every day about it mm. um she could sort of really help me uh, on my bad days when I'm when I'm feeling really really down. Mm. Um, sort of what support network did you have when you were going through it? So as soon as I come out of rehab, my friends came back into my life. Mm. Uh, close family members, my brother, my dad came. They were in my life, but we weren't really communicating because I was, you know, I'd. I was making some terrible choices yeah. with what I was doing and how I was trying to live my life. So they all came back. My mum was the constant. She was there through the bad times, mm. the good times. You know, when I came back out of rehab, she was still there. Um, my ex-partner helped a lot, uh, even though I wasn't with her. You know, I had children with her. Mm. She helped a lot. Um, and my new partner, my wife now, mm. were, um, and very similar to you, that's who I share with the most. She shares with me, I share with her. Yeah. If any of us are feeling down, we sort of bounce off each other to, to get through it. But, you know, friends were brilliant yeah. with me. And as I said before, strangers, funnily enough, you know, they, there's never a person, and this is what I'd say to anyone listening, there's never a person that said to me, I've not got time to listen to mm. this. Yeah. You know, when I was trying to open up, yeah. everyone, even if they didn't particularly know what to say to try and help, they were just helping by by listening yeah. uh, and giving me that ear to be able to to share what I wanted to, and that was so powerful. I mean, sometimes all you need is that arm around the shoulder. Sometimes, you know, that you need that person that actually is looking at you and, and really listening to what you're saying and taking in what you're saying because you. It's like I said before, it's a weight lifted off your shoulders as soon as you verbalise what's mm. thinking in your head. Yeah, and what helped me a lot as well, along with that, was writing things down. Yeah, yeah. You know, really getting it out and writing it on paper, and you know, that's part of the process as well of being in rehab. You mm. sort of go through. I did anyway. I went through the the twelve step program, and that was more about getting that information out and sort of writing it down. Do you know what I can relate massively mm. to that because. Um, one thing that I do is um, 
I write all the things that sort of make me happy or all the things that I want to achieve in my life. Mm. And I, um, I put it on a piece of paper and I fold it up mm. and I put it in my car because yeah, <laughs> I'm always yeah, driving. Yeah, yeah. I live in yeah. Tamworth and I travel to Leicester. Mm. So I'm always driving. Mm. Um, and it just, every time I look at it, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I want to achieve. That's what's making me happy. Mm. You know, keep striving towards that. Yeah. Um, it's because it certainly helps doesn't it it does it's so powerful i mean there, there's so many little things that I'd, that I'd love to share with everyone so reading was huge for me mm. i wasn't particularly very academic at school didn't like reading i was just all about football now once i was in rehab i i, I learned to that if you write things down it's powerful mm. just as you've just said yeah. um reading was huge for me I started reading in there for the yeah. first time ever and now i read two three books a month you've even written one yeah, I've, <laughs> I've written one, um, and that was powerful for me as well. That was a, a cathartic experience. Yeah, you know, getting all that information out and, and sharing it with others, and hopefully, so powerful. And you should be really proud of yourself for that. Yeah, well, thanks, mate. I, I hope that you know what I did put down. I tried to be, you know, hundred percent truthful with everything. So some things are quite in the book are quite difficult to read. Yeah, I think I understand that, but if it helps that even one person, you know, open up a little bit more to get that help and support that they need it was important to do yeah definitely completely agree so um in terms of moving forward then and look into the future um what advice would you give to people to stay positive um if they're feeling uh, in that sort of negative frame of mind or in that low mood mm. what advice would you give well for me my, my go-to advice is always well, i started to struggle in life when purpose was gone yeah. And I, I talk about purpose so much that if you have purpose and, and you can try and fill your life with passions and try and find purpose, purpose, it then creates that pathway of being able to move forward. Yeah. So I talk to the kids in my academy a lot. When there's no pathway, that's when, as human beings, in my experience, we start to struggle in life. Yeah. Because there's no, there's no um, forward progression. Mm. So you start looking around for other things and you're sort of stuck where you are at that point. And then purpose became for me, how drunk can I get? Yeah. How many drugs can I take? Mm. And it leads you into a real negative place. So for me, number one is purpose. Yeah. If, if you can try and create purpose in your life, um, that will give you that path, pathway to, to move forward. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think I'd, uh, I'd certainly say that too. And w one thing I would say in terms of advice as well is if somebody does open up to you, if, if you're that person that uh, somebody trusts, mm. um, make sure that you, know, you listen and mm. don't be afraid of giving advice or don't be afraid of actually saying, I'm here for you. Yeah. Talk to me. You know, because that, that person, you, mm. you might be the only person that that person turns to. Yeah. You know, so it's really important, isn't it, that we we do we, we do provide that opportunity. Anyone can provide that opportunity to have a listening ear. Yeah, and it, it's, what I try and tell say to people is, it, you, you don't have to understand it. Yeah. You, you know, if you... If someone's opening up, you don't have to understand what they're they're saying. Mm. Just being there, and being present in that moment, and being that ear for someone to talk to, is so powerful. And I know a lot of people will think, I don't know what to say. Mm. Should I say this? Should I say that? Sometimes it's great to relay that information yeah. to the person that's saying it. Listen, I, I I don't really know what advice to give, but I'm here to listen to you. Yeah, that is so powerful. That's and a fantastic then it, point. It, yeah. it puts you both at ease then. Yeah. And you, as I said before, the, pe the people that I've shared to in the past, they've come to me later on and said that really helped me mm. in, in what I was, you know, sort of going through, and it obviously helped me. So it, powerful to share. Looking back, though, do you ever sort of recognise your achievements, even though you was going through such a bad time mm. and you were really, really low? Do you ever sort of look back and think, actually, I'm proud of some of the things that I did? I mean, like. Um, one thing that you did was you scored the final goal at Filbert Street against Spurs mm. uh, May 11th 2002 yeah. Yeah. Um, and to make it to that point where you're a professional footballer mm. and you've written yourself in the history books mm. of being the last person to score at Filbert how does that make you feel looking back? Oh yeah so <clears> proud 
it, really proud. You know, a lad growing up in Leicester, supporting Leicester from from such a young age, playing for the club from such a young age. It was a deep honour mm. uh, to score that goal at Filbert Street. Um, so no, I can look back, and I think it ties into my point about purpose. So. I never had any mental health issues at all growing up as a kid, um, and but I had purpose. Yeah. My purpose was to play for Leicester, play in the Premier League, and that was my dream. And that pathway was created for the purpose that I had. Yeah. Now, when that had all gone after injury, that is when I found I really started to struggle mm. in life. And and for me, it was because purpose was gone. Yeah. Um, so thank God that you found that purpose now, and you're really doing well for yourself, aren't you? And moving forward with your life, and you seem really, really happy. To be fair, yeah, I am. I mean, I still have my low days. Yeah, I think everyone does. And as I said before, I don't think you're ever cured of, of mental health issues. Mm. You know, if you've suffered with them before, they may come again. There may be days where you wake up and you just feel a little low. Yeah. But the tools that we spoke about earlier, they're important. To, to have the routine, the small habits, the small disciplines, mm. you know, limiting the, 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 the negatives in your, in your life, the small negatives, and it, it helps you get through it, and then it always seems, as the day goes on, that sort of dark cloud that you felt in the morning time it has lifted a little. Yeah. Um, so that would be my advice to people as well. Brilliant. Well, thanks ever so much, Matt, for, for speaking to us today. You're an absolute legend. Oh, and, uh, yeah, really, really appreciate that and all, all the stuff that you're doing. And uh, well done for everything that you've achieved. And uh, it's, it's absolutely awesome that you're willing to talk to us about uh, such sensitive issues. So oh, thank thanks, you, mate. Thanks for talking to me as well. Oh, appreciate it. Cheers, buddy.